the greatest philosopher of our time, and certainly I would argue of all time, Stefan Molyneux, with over 650,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, and he's also got a massive podcast following. His arguments are so strong that Democrats flee at the sound of debate. His audience is armed to the teeth with the truth, and they are the backbone of the conservative party with their very powerful arguments. Stefan has been loyal to the Trump party since the very beginning, but he is ultimately loyal to truth. If you don't know him, type Stefan Molyneux in the search box above and press click as soon as this video is over. One of many things I've learned from Stefan Molyneux, Steph the Wise has said many times, the beginning of wisdom is to call things by their proper name. He actually just did a video with that exact title, and I'm going to give you some clips from that video uh, with his permission because he sets up my argument better than I possibly could. So meet Steph. Let's talk about language versus results. There is this tendency in government programs to obviously give themselves noble names. You know, they're the dreamers and it's the Department of Education. It's the Department of Defense. It's not a Department of Defense. It's a Department of oligarchical profit, taxation and <laughs> arming crazy people around the world but you know that stuff's a jam onto a business cards uh, there was one up here in canada called the fair share health levy um because you know who's against the fair share and who's against health and levy sounds better than tax <sighs> and they put a lot of work into these names the patriot act right i mean so that if you argue against it you must not be a patriot it's all i mean people who argued against the patriot act were the real patriots and so this language problem is a big challenge for people to overcome because you do have to refer to it like i want to end welfare it sounds bad i i want to end government health care all people hear is i want to end health care right i mean this is it's a real challenge we are you know sadly we are in such a state of, of propaganda and knee-jerk reaction to hyper emotional phraseology that if you lose the debate on definition you lose the debate these are all the, the sticky honey traps of language that have been set up by the powers that be and reinforced over decades by people uh, in the media and uh, you know, people in the entertainment industry and so on. It has all been set up so that the left, the, 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 the tyrants, the coercive addicts own the language that is considered benevolent. Stefan is a Canadian debate champion. He knows the connotation of words gives that your statements context. Remember that context is everything in a debate. A war hero could also be called a mass murderer. And, and you know, you just don't want to get those confused in the wrong company. What have they set up? Well, they've set up that the right equals violence, but the left equals compassion and, and, and niceness and helping people. And so they've set up this wonderful thing where the only reason that you would be against leftist policies is you're crazy, you're immature, you're bigoted, you're racist, you you know, this old canard that well, you know, white men are lashing out because they're losing power, and you know, this kind of like it's all this emotional stuff. And this translation to emotional language is also very important, you know, like you can see this in my videos, like on the flat earth and stuff like that, and people writing, you can see the fear in Steph's eyes as his worldview begins to crumble. <laughs> okay, I mean pretend creepy ESP, still not an argument. So back in the day, they used to, used to develop a negative and then print the picture, right? And if you were really good, like at, at, at doing camera work and, and processing film, you could look at the negative and kind of see in your mind, you'd flip it to see what it actually looked like. And that is, that's how it works with government programs. If you want to know what the government program is for, look at the opposite of what it claims. Is welfare there to help the poor? No. The welfare is there to make sure that the poor don't escape their dependence on government power so that there's a demand, right? There was a big problem. The free market was getting rid of people's need for government because they had enough money they didn't need to steal. They, they had enough money to be able to pay for their own kids' education if they wanted to. They were had enough money to, to that the crime was going. Like, there was lots of wonderful things happening. And so when you're about to escape the net of government power, the government wants to trip you up and get you back, right? To, to, you know, if you're about to kick a drug and the drug dealer is making a lot of money off your purchases, he wants to get you rehooked on the drug. And so the purpose of these government programs is the direct opposite of what is stated 
But if people stay in the realm of what is stated rather than looking at the data and the effects of what's happened, you, you can't crack them because they are just useful idiots for those in power. So challenge the language, win the debate, save the world. Thanks so much for listening. The word of the week is leakers. And that is all you're going to hear about on the news. And I want to parse that word out for you so that we can get our hashtags right and fight this info war properly. What is a leaker? Someone that leaks information. Okay, so Julian Assange is a leaker. WikiLeaks is a collection of leakers' gifts to Americans. These people undertake huge risks when they leak us documents. They could be jailed, killed, and many have to leave the country for their entire lives. They could give up their families. Their entire lives are flipped upside down so that they can leak documents to Americans. These are modern day heroes. Of course, the government calls them evil, but they're a little biased because they're the ones being leaked on, right? And so this problem of language versus outcome is a real challenge because it is kind of like an intelligence test. Well, this is what the government says. Well, so what if it's what the government says? I mean, what the, the government will say anything. You know, the government is like some middle-aged Lothario who's trying to get into your pants if you're like a young, nubile, attractive woman. And I'll say a bunch of stuff, but is it, is he really a pilot and a brain surgeon? I'm drenched. If I'm in a debate, I will try not to say, well, you know, I want to get rid of the Department of Education. It's like, well, I want to end coercively funded indoctrination, or I want to end, you know, coercively funded pretend education. Like, I want real education to take the place of fake education. I want real news to take the place of fake news. And that is, is a real challenge to not cede the high ground, to not give up the high hills of language. So we need these leakers to tell us the truth We um, from the inside. If we condemn the leakers, we are condemning the only people that tell us the documented truth, the documented truth about our government. Using the word leaker negatively is a critical mistake, and if it's not corrected, we will shut ourselves off from the truth entirely. On the other hand, we still want to convict people that use their government position for political gain. By unmasking American citizens like General Flynn, for instance, a quick review of unmasking. The NSA records all communications of foreign officials. Let's, let's be honest, they record all of our phone communications, and they have been for decades. We know this because Edward Snowden leaks the truth about the NSA, which is the whole point of this video. He leaked the truth. But I digress, back to unmasking. Unmasking citizens is a power held by a select and trusted group within our government because it's pretty much ultimate spying power. But unmasking sounds harmless. Unmasking is like you're unmasking, you're revealing the sneaky guy. But no, 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 you the unmasker are the sneak. You are the Watergate eavesdropper on your political opponent. That's unmasking. Spying is unmasking. Meanwhile, leaking sounds terrible. It sounds like it's going to be a giant mess in the fridge. This gap between what is said and what occurs in reality is something that is quite a challenge. And, and so how do you deal with the challenge? Well, refusing to cede positive terms to your opposition or to your debate partners, if you want to look at it in a slightly more positive way, that's really essential. Do not cede positive terms to those who wish to oppose you. The point is we need leaks and we speak so badly of leaks, but I actually have a, a list of every leak and who published it from inauguration day to the end of May. And I like that. I like knowing what my president is up to. I like knowing the stuff that he doesn't want me to know. That's called transparency. When you are being watched so closely that there's no possible time to commit a crime, nothing could slip through the cracks. I like that because you can't hide. And I wish the FBI had the same transparency. Well, the talking points are completely blacked out. You heard that right. They're blacked out. Again, they weren't blacked out by General, uh, Attorney General Lynch. They weren't blacked out by uh, James Comey. They weren't blacked out by uh, Barack Obama. They were blacked out by the Justice Department run by Attorney General Sessions 
an appointee of President Trump. If it's something outside that scope, he needs to come to the acting attorney general, at this time me, for permission to expand his investigation. But I think we are stuck with the language we, uh, leaker, unless WikiLeaks wants to change their name to like Wiki, WikiBlows. Leaker, they've claimed leaker, WikiLeaks. It's a tough sell, but leaks help America. And that's the most important linguistic dis uh, distinction of our time right now. How can we treat leakers and unmaskers the same? We just can't. We just can't. You go down in history, you are remembered forever if you are a wiki leaker. When somebody uses their government position to spy on political opponents though, they're not leakers. They're unmaskers and they're the scum of the earth. So Steph, if you could parse out these definitions for us, give us some philosophical advice so that we're not putting wiki leakers and, and whistleblowers in the same category as the scum within our government. Challenge the language, win the debate, save the world. Thanks so much for listening.